Good morning, Craig Howard here. Happy to be with you again this morning. Uh, we had a young lady at our church yesterday. Her name is Megan Kite, and she works with campus ministry at Fairmont uh, University, uh, Fairmont State University in Fairmont, West Virginia. And she shared some of her ministry and, and some of her passion and some of the difference that the ministry that she's involved in is making at Fairmont State and other places. And it was really impressive. Um, because we know statistics tell us that a lot of things can a lot of things happen when kids go off to college. Seven out of ten kids that go to college walk away from their faith, um, and uh, the college kids spend an inordinate amount of time. Not all college kids, but a large number of college kids spend an inordinate amount of time. Uh, drinking while they're at school to the extent that it creates a problem. Um, over four years, researchers say the average college student deals with 102 alcohol-related consequences the morning after. They range from blacking out to suffering hangovers to pressure to having sex with somebody uh, or having to miss class or work because they drink too much the night before. Um, however, the team also found out that there is a factor that that makes a difference in how much kids drink. And uh, they find that kids that come from parents who they know are going to disapprove of their drinking, um, disapprove of them getting drunk, who are going to disapprove of this activity, are far less likely to be involved in alcohol-related problems than kids whose parents don't care if they drink or who just kind of ignore drinking as something that's just you know, part of life. Um, both of my kids tell me, and I, I realize this sounds a little bit as a naive statement. I believe them, but I have no way of proving it. Uh, both my kids tell me that neither one of them drank while they were in college. Um, neither one of them, as far as I know, drink to this day. Um, and it's not that I <clears throat> used to hammer on the evils of alcohol. What I did do is let them in on the things that I had had to deal with the, as a pastor working with families because of people who couldn't control their alcohol and lost their families, lost their jobs, lost their lives, lost all, you know, lost uh, the relationship with their children, all sorts of things that I as a pastor dealt with uh, in trying to help people in the aftermath of alcohol. And I would let them know, you know, here's what's, here's what's going on. Plus they saw their friends acting really stupid and doing stupid things after drinking. Um, the point I'm getting at is the Bible tells us if we raise our children to know biblical principles, if we raise our children to know why we believe what we believe, not just look at them and say, don't do that, but to say, here's the reason I believe what I believe. It can make a huge difference as they grow older. Um, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 22, 6, <clears throat> start children off the way they should go. And even when they're old, they'll not turn from it. In 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy chapter 6, Chapter 3, verse 15, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says, he's talking about the impact that, that Timothy has and the, and the way he believes and why he believes it. And he says, and, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture, Scriptures. He's talking about how his mother and grandmother, uh, Lois and Eunice, had made such a difference in his life and how they had taught him from infancy to know the scriptures. And he says, now you're able to make wise decisions for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I'm, I am at a loss to understand why parents feel it's less and less important to have our kids in church and more and more important to get them in little league that call, in in a some sort of sporting program that takes them out of church, I'm I'm confused by that. I don't understand setting that precedent in their life. I don't understand why parents are less and less concerned about having their kids in Sunday school um, when it is a place where so many foundational 
truths are taught. <clears throat> but I know that we're entering into a era in society because parents have felt less of the need to train their children in the scriptures. We're enter entering into an era in society where fewer and fewer and fewer um, teenagers and young adults have any kind of relationship with Jesus Christ. I think we need to remember what the Bible teaches, that it is our responsibility to teach the scriptures, to teach them when they are awake and when they are asleep, when they rise up, when they sit down in the morning, in the evening, that we are responsible to give them God's word because it will make a difference in the person they become. I hope you have a great day today. Uh, God bless you and all that you're doing. Mom, if you're watching, I love you. You too, Aunt Judy. God bless.